Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Let's Great pretend this is the sun that's beaming outside because <laughs> I hope everyone got out uh, and about this morning. We're in a beautiful place and um, we're going to spend some time in this room, but we'll also have a great time outside as well. So let's enjoy that. Yeah, and thank you. I should caveat really quickly that I just joined Periscope, which is a 500 person agency in Minneapolis, not the Twitter app. Just yeah. in case anybody's wondering, um, <laughs> there is a lawsuit, in case anybody's also wondering, um, <laughs> which we're going to win, yeah. uh, by the way. You're on the good side of that. Yeah, we're on, we're on the, yeah, with the good guys, 1994, yeah. hard, to, hard to argue. Um, all right, so we wanted to sort of take a moment to really frame the conference. And we had um, a really excellent session yesterday um, where we started to lay this out and engage. And the whole point of this is we all come to conferences, right? We all leave work, come to unbelievably beautiful locations. It was 30 in Chicago this morning, if anybody cares. Um, come to these beautiful locations, we get inspired, we see amazing things, and then we return to the office on Wednesday, Thursday, or next Monday, and everything goes back to normal, right? And I think for us, and we're at a really critical juncture in the industry, and you're gonna hear in one of the first talks this morning, I think a really inspiring sort of look at where everything is going, and if we're honest with ourselves, we're in a, just a tremendous time of turmoil. It's happened slowly, so we can sort of be symptoms to the boiled frog syndrome, right? Where the heat just slowly gets turned up under us and we can, if anybody's ever cooked a frog, by the way, that's how you do it, slowly turn up the heat, right? You don't drop them into a pot of hot water. So the notion is how can we start to think differently? How can we do things differently? How can we help lead the industry and not be a victim to the change that is happening uh, to us as consumers, right? We cannot divorce who we are as people from what we do as marketers. So when we go home and only watch things on DVR and on demand and we fast forward through commercials and we never click on a banner and yet we stand up in front of our clients and say, here's your television campaign, here's your digital display campaign, we're lying and we need to stop that. So with that all being said, what we did was frame it out into five C's. And we started with 17 H's, we looked at three R's, but we settled on five C's. We thought that was a good place to, to go. Okay, so we're gonna take you through these uh, five C's. This is not meant to be uh, really a big presentation. It's meant to, as Liz said, frame out the conference. So throughout the next uh, couple of days in these presentations, you will see uh, really interesting speakers. Hopefully you will hear some things that inspire you, but they will all fit into one of these five C's, I think. Um, the first is create. And uh, we chose that one first because throughout all these things that we're gonna talk about, um, really trying to get people to get inspired and come up with things, hopefully out of this conference. You don't know where the inspiration is gonna come from, and I think we're all here to do some magical things, maybe for our business or for our clients' businesses, but at the end of the day, with all the technologies that we're all gonna talk about and all kinds of different things, we have to create something great. And that's part of the magic of being in, the, in this business as well. We're way past the days of um, when I started on the agency side some 25 years ago, the creatives were the art director and writer team. Well, we're way past that. Doesn't mean that uh, we devalue writers and art directors. We need uh, great writers and art directors, but we're all creators. We're all creating new things, um, whether it's technologies or platforms or ways of communicating with people. And there's so much more to be created. And that's one of the coolest things I think about being in this business right now, is that we can create interesting, powerful things, and we're just at the beginning of this. Um, one of the things that I learned a long time ago, and it was well before I got into the agency business, was trying to um, think about more than kind of the how and the what that is something that you do. Um, my grandfather actually uh, once said to all of us, um, what's the most powerful word in the English language? So anybody want to throw out a word or two? You can curse, you can do whatever you want. Magic? Yeah. Heard. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I heard three yeses. Yes is trending. <laughs> Not going to go with the... Sorry? Your own name. Your own name is a powerful word. Yes. What else? Why? Why? Who said that? 
<laughs> Stand up, give her a round of applause. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So none of the words are right or wrong, of course, but why was the, uh, the word that he chose? And it inspired me in a way, and it's actually, believe it or not, for me, and what we do at Mini and, and some of the things that we try and do, is try to get people to be inspired in a way. We still do some cool stuff that's creative and maybe doesn't have the full story, but as we talk about videonomics and content and all that, if you can actually get somebody to want to find out why, the why of your product, or why did you do that, or why is that product made that way, or the backstory and behind the scenes kind of stuff. To actually get people deeper into the process and into the why is very powerful. So um, I use that as a bit of a guidepost when we're looking at work sometimes, but at the end of the day, it's still creating something, and that's what we're all here to do for the next couple of days. Awesome. So the next C is contact. And Many of these conferences, this is where we start, right? And it, we start talking about algorithms and data stacks and third-party data merging with first-party data. And that's all valuable and that's all real. But there's also some bigger issues as it relates to contacting people, right? And we're gonna talk, we talked extensively about it yesterday. Josh actually just mentioned it again. And I think it's one of the biggest sort of unspoken or unmentionables as we talk about sort of content in the world today, which is discoverability. And the truth is that the reason why television is really easy is that you can turn on Lifetime, the channel Lifetime, and you kind of know what you're gonna get, right? The Onion did a whole spoof television schedule years ago that I still laugh about, right? And every show on Lifetime was, please don't take my baby, right? Hilarious, right? And they nailed it. They nailed the CW, they, I mean, and so this idea of being able to sort of passively ingest or thinking of the television channel as a curator is something that we as humans need. And we were talking this morning about YouTube and certainly it's, it's an ocean, right? It's just absolutely an ocean of content. And if we're a brand or if we're a creator as an agency on behalf of a brand, you're literally dropping a kernel of salt into the ocean. And the days of being able to buy enough reach are rapidly, rapidly diminishing. And so as we think about sort of how we're going to innovate around discoverability, how we're going to sort of create curation models that work, and curation is a little bit of an overused word in marketing, but it's still valuable and still what it is. We need to think about that. And then further on as we talk about contact, and we really wrestled with this as a topic, but I think it's important that we bring it up, is that Media companies are, are creating content, agencies are creating content, clients direct are creating their own content, and there really is sort of these forces at work that are sort of depending, no matter what side of the table you sit on, are important, and we need to talk about them because the fabric of sort of what we have always done is changing. And so understanding who's in what lead chair when is really, really important. And we need to be honest and have real honest conversations about what is the value of an agency? What is the value of a publisher? What's the value of an in-house creative team? They're all, all very relevant uh, pieces for us to talk about. So the third C is connect. Um, we're gonna talk over the next couple of days a lot about uh, different measurement tools and KPIs and all kinds of things, but um, I think the simple way to really think about this is the opposite of ad blocking is connecting. And so if we can actually connect with people in a way where they wanna learn more, as we just talked about, and we're gonna see some examples of that, and they want to actually uh, engage with you in different ways, uh, getting consumers, whoever they may be in your target, to actually connect with you is very powerful. And so we're gonna talk a lot about that and what that means and how you evaluate that and so forth. Um, but the other thing I would just say is, um, and Josh mentioned it earlier, this is our conference, right? So you invested time, you invested money, you're here. Um, what I really hope you do, because I've been in that seat many times, is engage, but really connect with people. Meet some people that you don't know already, connect with them, and you don't know what's gonna happen. You really might be able to create um, something very powerful together but also connect in this room. Um, shout out, ask questions, like this is a certain size group for a reason. Um, so 
I would just really recommend you to connect in the next couple days and you'll get a lot out of it. All right, the fourth C is conclusion. And this doesn't mean the end, even though that's the French meaning of fin. Um, but what it means is we all try things, right? We're all creating, we're connect, contacting people, we're connecting, but we actually have, need to have a decision point, a yes, a no, a do more, do less. And this underpinning this is this notion that we need to build in to sort of our collective consciousness a absolutely em sort of embracing, wholly embracing of failure. And instead of looking at things that fail in the marketplace and sort of snickering to yourself or posting on anonymous boards about, we should be saying, that was awesome. Because that means they're trying something new. And so companies that fail, there are 50 behind them that are gonna innovate it slightly and succeed. And so we can look back to the early days of Friendster, right? Anybody who was on Friendster? And say like, that was the dumbest thing ever, right? Uh, hello, Facebook, right? So I think the notion of building a very high level of comfort around failure and celebrating it is important for us culturally, important for this room, important to be honest about it. And think actually the people that haven't failed aren't trying hard enough. Right, so that is something that we should build in. And this notion of coming to a conclusion point, coming to a stop point, and then moving forward. Yeah, so the last uh, C is continuation. So the good news about uh, being in the marketing industry is when you do maybe fail at something, like usually people you know, haven't died. Like it right. usually means people didn't see it. And if basically. they did, it is not our fault. No. It is not our but fault. But the point is, you're gonna continue from there. So where do you go from there? And the whole idea of what we're trying to do here is take the learning, move forward. We all hear about, not too far up the road, all these tech companies uh, failing fast and taking learning and so forth, but how many of us really sit in a room together in the middle at the end of a campaign and say, not only patting ourselves on the back of look how many views we got and all that kind of stuff, but what are we doing differently next? Doesn't mean what do we do wrong, it just means what are we doing differently next? How do you keep iterating and keep moving this stuff forward? And I hope again, as the speakers come up and share ideas and so forth, ask those kind of questions. You know, what would you have done differently or what did you do differently? Or this isn't all about like case study success kind of thing. We're all gonna take learnings and hopefully get better and better um, at what we do for a living. Uh, we, you know, at Mini have a struggle because we look at a whole different quote unquote purchase funnel. The purchase funnel um, is not linear anymore. There's been a lot of discussion about that. But in terms of continuation, it's not just how do you do your next campaign better. Um, continuation is also about how do you move your consumer once you engage with them, once you create something great, once you bring them into the experience, how do you move them even deeper into the relationship, buying your product, becoming loyal, et cetera. It's all different now. It used to be very straightforward and it's not. And so this is an exciting time for all of us to kind of learn a bit from some of the agencies and marketers and, and others that were gonna come up here over the next couple of days. But if you look at these five C's, um, use them as kind of a guidepost for yourselves for the next couple of days about creating, about connecting. Um, we'll do conclusions at the end, but that'll be late tonight. And then, uh, and then we'll continue throughout the day and for tomorrow as well. So gear up. Um, drink some coffee, put down your phones, close your laptops, and let's have a great conference. Thank you. Thanks.